Hey, what is going on guys? As you may have seen recently, I got a bunch of these new Attack Girl kits in here because we're going to start carrying them at USA Gundam Store. So if you guys are interested in getting any of these, uh, you can check them out at USA Gundam Store, of course. But uh, normally, if I got to, like a, a series of these kits, I would want to start with the first one, building the first one, then kind of go through the series of them to see how the kits changed or improved over time. I will let you guys know about that, of course, as I build them up, but I'm gonna start with the most recent one here, actually, because I figured it's the most recent one, so those of you guys who are interested in these kits probably most interested to see about this newest one because there's probably not a lot of coverage out there about it yet. So I figured I might as well let you guys know my thoughts on this, and then we'll work our way back through the line. I'll let you guys know my thoughts on it. So basically, the circuit here is, uh, is a scorpion themed and this is basically the successor to the first kit in the line as far as I know Which was the arachne which was was uh, spider themed So you got a girl with scorpion armor and you can take all that off and make a separate scorpion mech as far as I know Let's go just go ahead and check it out First of all, just the box here, the quality seems quite nice on this illustration here. It does, really, you know, remind me a lot of Nitty 2 ds style, the usual artist they use for the Megami device box and stuff. And like Megami device boxes, it's got that same kind of like a color tone, black background and like a, a main color for it. In this case, it's purple. And also similar to Megami device, you got a matte background box and a glossy image and texture. So I mean, just the, it does look really nice. So it's a nice looking box. Uh, you know, very reminiscent of Megami device, but you know, I don't mind, it's okay. It's got the Attack Girl logo up there, Eastern model over here, 112 scale full action plastic model kit. Okay, on the sides of the box, basically the same thing, just minus the glossy finish on there. On this side here, you can see front and back look, what it's gonna look with the scorpion and everything combined with the girl, all of that mecha suit is looking very tarantulas-esque. Do I need to make some tarantulas jokes in this video? I guess probably. Then of course you can take all the armor off and then make it into just a scorpion mecha on its own, like I said, and then there's just another close-up kind of action shot there with that uh, rad mask on her face and all the clear purple effect parts do look pretty cool. On the other side, you can see a look at the character figure there without all the armor and everything. You got some different face options here, so we'll take a look at those. You got some water side decals for the eyes, it looks like, and you got some shoes. And then over here, just a little bit about the kind of features of this. It's got just regular arms. You can attach the scorpion arms onto our arms to use those, kind of like how you see on the front of the box. It looks like it is maybe compatible with the arachne parts. That's the face mask of the arachne kit, the first one I mentioned. And it includes a base as well. And the base has a cool little logo printed on it also, which is a pretty cool. So let's go ahead and check it out. And as you guys can see, it's a pretty thick box here as well too. There's a lot of stuff in here, starting with our manual, which is right on top and then a whole bunch of runners underneath that. So we'll go through all the runners here in just a moment. Let's just go ahead and check out the manual here first. On the front here, obviously, just the illustration from the front of the box, assembly instructions on the back, just the 05 logo there. On the inside here, uh, again, it seems very Megami device style, basically just the, the look here on the inside of the manual as well too. You just got some photos here in the front showing uh, the product and different face options. And I believe we're gonna have some blank faces as well too. So if you didn't want to use uh, the faces that you got on there, you got some different blank options there. So it's just telling you how to put on the water slides on there as well, uh, eye wet stickers. And then our parts list, pretty extensive. Like I said, there's a lot of parts. And then we just get right into the construction. So it looks like you're building up the body all entirely first. And then you build the scorpion armor on the body, all like that. And then you kind of build the scorpion, other scorpion parts kind of on their own. And then I'm guessing there's some point where it shows you how to make the scorpion armor separately. Not really, but it seems like, it, oh yeah, there it is. So it's just when you're taking a few parts off the body, it seems pretty self-explanatory how to make the scorpion mech on its own. So here's the complete diagram with some line art there, everything. Uh, basically, it doesn't really seem to be serving any purpose necessarily, but just to be just line art of the design. And then over here, uh, product display, just some more images there with the armor on and everything. So you got lots of sample images here, which are good for if you want to get a good source for ideas for posing the kit. And I will say all the images in the manual here at the back and then at the front too seem to be of the product completely unpainted as far as I can tell, which is pretty cool. It's nice to see. So you get an idea of exactly how the kit is going to look. It does look like maybe it's got like some seam line removals on the flesh tone part. So I'm not totally sure that it's unpainted uh, or without any like top coat or anything on it, but it, it looks as far as I can tell pretty much unpainted, I think. Let's go ahead and check out the runners anyway. First up, let's take a look at our water slide decals here. See what we're working with. They do look 
pretty nice. As you can see on there, the uh, the sharpness of the printing, the color looks solid, it all looks pretty good. Oh, basically, it's just eyes there. You got like a Tat Girl logo and Easter model logo there, so I mean, you can put those on the kit if you want to. It would be cool to see some other logos and markings and stuff as well, too, in future kits rather than just the eyes. I mean, just having the eyes is nice, but it would be cool to have some other markings on there as well. I know that takes a lot more planning and, and stuff that needs to go into the kit, but I think it's something that would definitely make them a lot more appealing to people as well too. But we do also have these like uh, jewel stickers here, these like kind of like pink half circle stickers that are gonna go on like the pincer claws and they look really nice. I think we only need four of them, but you've got six, that means you've got a couple of extras there in case you need. So that's good. So those look re yeah, really, really good. And in this bag, you have basically all your other little stuff that uh, normally if, uh, from Codebook Gear or something would be like on a separate runner, but you've got like all your faces here like pre-packaged and the faces uh i mean just looking at this i mean the printing quality again looks pretty good they're in a little bit more matte finish than uh, i think what are typically i see from kotobukiya a little bit more matte looks like here's our other two just kind of basic looking ahead and then this kind of smirking side look there i mean they look pretty good i gotta say actually better than what i was expecting from photos that i've seen of some of the other kits in the line i haven't seen a lot of photos of this kit to be honest uh, so, I mean, unpacking here with you guys is like the first time really I'm seeing very much about it. Uh, and the faces do look better than some of the previous kits in the line, I think, but of course we'll see those as we go through them. Then in these other teeny tiny little bags here, we've got all of our different hand parts and everything, so we'll go through those here in just a bit as well too. Basically, three bags of hand parts, so it looks like we're gonna have a lot of different hands. All right, so our A-Runner obviously gonna be here in skin tone, and the marking at the top says Attack Girl Body Type 1. So I guess this, these are some generic body parts that are gonna be used by multiple different kits. You got the A1 there, and then B1 is kind of more of the same here. You can see some very recognizable parts like for thighs and things like that on there. And the runner C1 here in black, also gonna be a generic uh, runner here of just some body parts and a couple of connection parts on there, basically. And the same thing here for runner D1 as well. It's still just Attack Girl Body Type 1 runners here for this. So some parts for the legs, uh, arms, Arms, chest parts, knee parts, all that on here. Runner E is now in this dark purple and getting into some parts specific to this kit. So the marking on here does say for the circuit, as you can see, there's just some armor parts on there. We've got two of this E runner. And similarly here on runner F as well. Now this is the first time I'm really kind of noticing this going through the runners, is that this runner definitely feels a bit uh, like ABS, I believe. And I'm trying to look on the runner, usually it will say, uh, but it looks like maybe it doesn't say anywhere that I'm noticing on the runner if it is ABS or not, but it does look like ABS plastic as far as I can tell. Runner G here in gray is getting into some of like the internal frame parts and detail parts and stuff here for the scorpion armor, you got two of those. And then runner H just some more of those gray internal and detail parts. Runner I here, some frame parts for the legs, so we've actually got four of this I runner. Runner J is some clear purple parts and they look really nice, you got a really nice clear purple there, two of these J runners. Runner K1 here is actually a painted runner. Looking at the back of the runner, it looks like this one is also a clear purple runner, but then it's got some like metallic purple sprayed over the top of it, which does look pretty good. That said, even though this runner did come in its own separate bag to keep the plating safe on there, it is a little bit scuffed on this part. I'm not sure how well you guys are gonna be able to see that there. Maybe you can see that there. So there is a little bit of scuff uh, to the paint, unfortunately, there already. Then our K2 is a couple of more uh, skin tone parts there, one for the chest and then a couple of other parts there for like the head and face parts with the mask covering up the top half of the face. Runner L here is back to some black parts there for the kit and then we've got another runner L which I think is just a copy of this section of the runner there like that. But then we do also have runner L1 which is in gray here, some joint parts, obviously you can see we've got two of those. Then we've also got runner N1 here, which is in uh, that dark purple color. We got two of those as well. Runner N2 is some more clear purple parts. And then runner O1 is some hair parts here in gray. And runner O2 we have in three different colors. So you have gray, uh, which includes the face mask part on there as well too. You got it in a light lavender color. And then you've got it in a dark purple color. So I think you'll use like a mix of those, but at least you got some different hair options on there, it looks like. And then finally, runner Z1 and this other runner, which is not labeled, but I would guess just kind of like Z2 or just kind of as an extra runner. Obviously, it's just parts for the base and parts for the base. And that printing on there does look really nice if you, well, you know, if you like the design or whatever, I guess. I assume you would be able to remove that pretty easily if you wanted to. But it, yeah, the clear purple for this does look pretty nice. It's like a clear pinkish purple. It's a little bit different from the clear purple we saw on the previous runners. So it's a pretty nice color and it really catches the light quite nicely. So that is it guys, as you can see, a lot of stuff in the box there. Let me go ahead and work on this, get it all put together and we'll see how it looks. All right, here she is all built up and I gotta say, I mean, very impressive build. Now, uh, 
granted, it, a lot of like the main body itself is basically copied from the Megami device uh, design, but I mean, including uh, Bandai's Mechamasume kits, the VF Girl kit from Hasegawa, and the uh, Volks Vlockers kit, I mean, among these different companies' kits, I gotta say, Kodobukiya obviously is still the best, but uh, after Kodobukiya, this one, I gotta say, is a good contender for second place, definitely. Really solid kit, and you got a couple of loose parts on there, as you guys will see, but I mean, that's pretty standard, even Kodobukiya kits have that. For the most part, the kit's very solid, you got a lot of nice options in here as far as what you can do with the kit, so I mean, what you get in the box, you get a lot of plastic in there. And the face options do look pretty good, I gotta say. The whole design of everything is all quite nice. All the clear purple parts are really cool as well too, so definitely a really nice kit. Let's go ahead and check it out in full detail, starting off with all the accessories and everything. So the main accessory, of course, here going to be the whole Scorpion mech, so it's almost sort of like a Megami device kit and a Zoids kit all in one. Sort of, obviously not quite as massive and parts heavy as a Zoids kit, but there is a ton of parts in there, the metallic purple parts in there that are included on there do look really nice as well too, and the clear purple parts, so you've got a nice mix of the metallic purple and the clear purple. And a reminder too that you do have those little jewel stickers that are meant to go here in the claws, but I haven't put those on there yet just because like uh, once the kit's painted, you're gonna wanna put those on there. And these are the kind that once you put them on there, you just put them on there once, can't necessarily re-stick them. But I mean, you have tons of articulation with this, as you might imagine, just to give you a close-up look at that there, kind of all these joints of course move, so you have movement there and that can also rotate and the claws open up so that opens like that you got some nice detail up inside of there and just like I said those clear parts do look really cool all the legs you can rotate that and bend that and you've got a couple of points of articulation there in the legs as well too so I mean everything everything bends as you might expect for a set of tarantula legs did I say spider before I think I did I don't know, anyway, and then the tail as well too, also made up of a few different sections that will all move, that will move, that will move, that will move, that will move, all the way up to the end there that will move, and then the clear part there for like the spike at the end that will also move, and again, just a lot of little fine parts there around. Now I have, uh, mostly it's pretty tight, but it, there is a little bit of weakness here in one of the joints, so. Uh, just make sure everything's pressed together nice and firmly. I did have a little bit of trouble getting some of these parts on. Actually, like kind of the only real fitting issue that I had uh, was a couple of these parts here in the tail. It was really hard to get them pressed together. But that was basically just like the frame parts and these purple armor parts that you put on top of that basically kind of hold it together. So uh, while the pieces inside are a little bit kind of tight to get pressed together, the outer part holds them on just fine. So you've got tons of articulation and all this really nice detail and colors and everything on this just as its own separate thing. But of course you can kind of take this apart a little bit and put it actually attach it onto her backpack as well too, make this as like part of the whole, part of the of her armor as well too. So we'll see that here in just a little bit. And of course you've got the base, which does look really nice. And you have these like little connection panels here, which you can attach onto there. So if you wanted to attach multiple get bases together, you can use these to do that. So if you had a number of different kits that all use the same kind of base, you can attach them on there like that. Um, but anyway, you also have a number of different pieces here for the arm of this, whether you wanted to have uh, one long and one short, or two long or two short, or two long and one short. Anyway, you have a, a lot of them, so you can definitely uh, do a lot with this arm. And it feels pretty solid too. It's nice and tight, so moving that around, I feel like that you should have no issues uh, keeping that strong on there. Actually, a little bit too tight as that just uh, snapped there, but fortunately we have a lot of extras. So I mean, it's still like tight enough. I could probably still use this actually as it is, but I, I'll probably just go ahead and switch that out for a non-broken one. So that's kind of odd that that just cracked. So it's uh, very tight. So just make sure you're a little bit careful with that. Don't just be moving it around haphazardly like I was there, so be careful with that. And then we got the parts for making the unarmored version, which we'll see later on here, but there's just the legs for that, and the shoes, kind of boots, we do also have just like these different style feet, so you have a couple options for that. You also got the unarmored uh, arm pieces and the unarmored top compared to what we've got there on the kit now, the armored version using a mix of black and purple parts like that for a more armored look. And for the unmasked head, you have the full head here, you'll just have to swap the hair, so you just have to take the hair off of one head and put it onto the other, but uh, without having to take the head apart to swap those out is pretty nice and that's convenient. And again, those metallic purple parts in there do look really nice as well as the clear purple parts and you have some different options here for the masked face, basically just for the mouth. You have like, just kind of looks like neutral mouth, you have this smiling mouth, and then you have this open mouth as well too. So it's basically just like the half face versions of the painted face options that we have. Just wanna give you guys a really close up look at that because you can see, I mean, the painting of them is done really quite well. Well, Kotobukiya does their face, I mean, their pre-painted faces are amazing looking, and these are pretty close to that. I mean, if not the same level 
Uh, they're very close to the same level in terms of just the quality of the painting on them. And again, just a reminder, you have a set of just blank faces as well too, and water slide decals so you can change those if you wanted. Basically, these water slides give you the option to make the eyes looking into one direction or the other. If you wanted to change that, you can apply these just onto your blank face options. And that's basically it for the accessories. You've got this connection piece, which you'll use for attaching the scorpion parts onto her backpack, and then all your different hand options, which we have a lot, all your standard type hands. Now you have the unarmored and the armored versions. I just want to show you, I really do like the armored ones though as well. They're really nicely detailed and have like even the little sharp claws on the end of them so especially the armored hands do look really quite nice. And just for comparison here is the Brave Girl from Kotobukiya so you can see it's going to be generally about the same size as your standard Frame Arms Girl kit here and I tried a number of different heads. I tried this head, I also tried a Megami Device head and I tried one of the new Sosai Shoujo Teien girl kit heads and none of them fit necessarily onto the ball joint for the circuit kit here unfortunately so it really would have been cool if they would have been included some other uh, option parts for the neck ball joint to be able to uh, swap out different heads from different Kotobuki kits obviously that's from a different company and in your Kotobuki kits usually they do include that they include different ball joints for using uh, heads from different kind of lines, but they're all among the Kotobukiya properties, I understand. Now, for this kit to include parts to be able to use uh, parts from Kotobukiya, I understand it's a different company, but I think it still would have been something just as like a couple extra parts in there, just a couple of different size ball joints uh, for the neck really would have been a nice thing to include and obviously wouldn't have cost all that much to include a couple extra parts on the runner. Now as for the articulation of the kit, I mean it's all pretty standard if you've built any of the Megami Device or Frame Arms Girls kits, they're gonna all be basically the same so I won't get too much into it and you guys will see I'll do a bunch of different poses of the kit showing off everything but just on a couple quick notes here on the back there's where you can plug the action base into the back of it. Also here on the lower back if you just remove this little piece here, a little bit tricky. Uh, to do so, but there, once you get that out, there's where you could also plug the action base into there. That's also just going to basically act as your two connection points, which you'll use for, like I said earlier, just attaching on the backpack. You'll have to attach it into both of those points there, which is good because it locks the torso kind of into place here. For once that backpack is on, that'll just be locked like that, so you won't have any drooping or something uh, in the torso articulation. But anyway, these other parts here on the side of the leg are connected via this kind of joint that gives you a little bit of articulation with how you might want to move those around. I found it that's a, one of the weak points of this is that thing, that a little joint in there tends to fall apart kind of easily. But you can move these parts of armor there on the side of the legs around. Up here on the upper arms though, those armor panels there will basically just uh, rotate, and then of course you can just rotate that whole section around whether you wanted that to be kind of more on the front or more towards the back, you can move that section around there on its own. Other than that, like I said, and like you'll see here in just a moment, the articulation in general is just going to be pretty good, pretty standard for these type of kits, so let's just go ahead and get into it. So as you guys will see here as we try out some different poses and things that the articulation is really, really quite nice, and it's again pretty standard if you've built any of these kits before, you have an idea of what to expect. But that is definitely one of the best things about this kit too, is all the different forms you have to choose from, so whether you want it unarmored, armored, or fully armed with all the scorpion parts on there, it's really cool. And how you have the whole scorpion mech thing as a whole kind of separate thing if you wanted. There's a lot of, like I said, a lot of plastic here in the box, a lot of stuff you can do with this. So other weapons are something I guess maybe would have been cool, some sort of like spear or sword weapon, something along those lines I guess to be included. But if you've got other kits in the line, of course you can use those. And any other sort of Kotobukiya MSG option parts and things like that uh, should be compatible with this as well too. So there's certainly a lot more customization and things you could add as far as other weapons and things to it as well too. But I gotta say for my first experience with this Attack Girls line so far, I am quite impressed. I can highly recommend you guys check these out if you're a fan of the Mecha Musume kits uh, from Kotobukiya. You can definitely check one of these out and don't expect it to be exactly on the same level, but it's pretty darn close. So definitely check them out if you're interested. And again, we'll be having them all at USA Gundam Store, so you can check them out there. The link will be down in the video description below. Use my coupon code there as well too to save yourself 10% off. Uh, these kits or anything else you find there on the site. So again guys, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you so much for the support. Hope you're all having a great day and I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye guys.